we're going to look at his history first. This is some of there's really a lot of good histories about about Freud, and I like his memories and dreams and reflections. It's a great book to work through using this chart because you're going back at different time periods. And if you have this material, you can go back and check it against it. Um, here he is, uh, born in, let's see, surviving child of is young, okay, youngest child. Um, his father was a rural, poor rural pastor in a Swiss Reformed church, while his mother came from a wealthy and established Swiss family. So it's interesting that his father was poor and his mother was rich, and he married the same way. He married the same way. He made sure the wife was well off. It buffered him. So he had that in his instinct, that structure with Pluto Moon, the Saturn and the Ascendant. He, that was already inside of there. Um, at six months old, his father got a more appropriate, a prosperous parish. But tension between his parents was growing. An eccentric and depressed woman, she spent much of her own time in a separate bedroom, enthralled by spirits, she said, visited her at night. He had a better relationship to his father because. He thought it would be predictable and thought his mother very problematic. Although during the day he saw her as predictable, at night she, he felt, and felt some frightening influences from her room. His mother became strange and mysterious. And once Young claimed he saw a faintly luminous figure coming from her room with the head detached from the neck and floating in the air in front of the body. So he had visions from his mom too. Fearful ones, Moon Pluto. His mother was put in hospitalization. He was taken by his father to live with his unmarried, with Young's unmarried sister, but was brought back to the residence. But his mother's bouts, continuous bouts of absence and depressed moods influenced her son's attitude towards women, one of innate unreliability. A view, a view he later called the handicap he started out with. Certainly it's there, you can see that in his chart. The moon conjunct Pluto squared Saturn well, and squared Uranus. Okay, so um, solitary and furniture. I'm not going to go through all of this. I have some things marked up a little bit more. Um, he studied Basel, worked at psychiatric hospital. His dissertation was published in 1903, which was the 1903. Sorry, uh, 03 was Saturn on the ascendant. So his dissertation was published in 1903, titled On the Psychology and Pathology of So-Called Occult Phenomena. So even on his ascendant, he still published something, but he was almost putting it down or questioning it. In 1906, he published studies in World Association Letter Center, later sent a copy of this book to Freud, after which a close friendship between these two, because he was somewhat putting down the so-called occult phenomena, Freud aligned with him assuming he's going to help attack the occult phenomena to make it just Freudian analysis. Anyways, after which a close friendship between these two men followed for some six years. Uh, 1912, Young published Wallingen und Symbol der Libido, uh, not German, uh, known in English as Psychology of the Unconscious, resulting in a theoretical divergence between him and Freud and a consequent break in their friendships, both stating that the other was unable to admit he could possibly be wrong. <laughs> See, Young's fixity, I can't possibly be wrong. And that means that Freud would have to be wrong, and Freud being the Taurus, I can't possibly be wrong. So after this following what Young went through a pivotal, difficult psychological transformation, he was exacerbated by the news of the First World War and called Young's experience a creative illness and compared it to Freud's period of what he called neurasthenia and hysteria. Okay, so they talked about him in the war as being a, dodger made, a, a doctor made commandant of an internment camp, nice way of calling concentration camp. Um, he worked to improve the conditions of these soldiers stranded, stranded in neutral territory. He encouraged them to attend university courses. Yeah, but how many people went to university courses in the internment camps? Anyways, um, that's my criticism of this. Anyways, so this is written about him, not by him. And um, 1903, sat, again, he published, Saturn was on his ascendant, he married, who came from a wealthy family. They had five children, and the marriage lasted until her death. 
and he had more or less open relationships with other women. The most well-known women with whom Young believed to have a, had extramarital relationships were patient and friend Sabina, uh, Sabina Spielrein, and Tony Wolf. He continued to publish books until the end of his life, including Flying Saucers, A Modern Myth of Things Seen in the Sky, which analyzed archetypal meaning and possible psychological significance of the reported observations of UFOs. Um, he had a friendship with an English Roman Catholic, English Roman Catholic priest after he published his controversial answer to Job. Anyways, this goes on. I'm not going to go on and on through that. I think there's another part. Okay. Young was 30 when he was sent, when he sent his studies to world, in word association, he sent his, when he was sent his studies in word association to Sigmund Freud. The two men met for the first time the following year and Young recalled the discussion between himself and Freud as interminable. They talked, he remembered, for 13 hours virtually without stopping. Six months later, the then 40, 50 year old Freud sent a collection of his latest published essays to Young in Zurich which marks the beginning of an intense correspondence and collaboration that lasted six years and in May, 2010. May, 2010, that was, that was the Saturn squaring the sun and the Senate and Neptune. Um, okay. That's the correspondence. They stopped writing as Saturn has squared his sun and the Senate. Okay. Uh, this time, Young resigned as chairman of the Psychoanalytical Association, where he'd been elected with Freud's support. Today, Young and, Young and Freud's theories have diverged. Nevertheless, they influenced each other during the intellectually formative years of Young's life, as Freud was always 50 years at their meeting, as well beyond the formative years. Okay, so just let me go on a little bit more here. Formative years, where were we? Yeah, he became fam familiar with Freud's ideas of the unconscious through Freud's interpretation of dreams in 1900 and was a proponent of the new psychoanalysis. At the time, Freud needed collaborators and pupil to validate and spread his ideas. Rogozzi was a renowned psychiatric clinic in Zurich, which Young was a young doctor whose research had already given him international recognition. So he was seeing Freud, Young, Freud was seeing Young as the perfect student that would bring glory and attention to his works, not that he had his own agenda. In 1908, Young became an editor of the newly founded Yearbook of Psychoanalytical and Pathology, Psychopathological Research. The following year, Young traveled with Freud and Sander Frenzy to the US to spread the news of psychoanalysis. And in 1910, he became the chairman for life of the International Psychoanalytical Association, 1910. Again, there's only squares, there's no Uranus, no, there's the Neptune, the dream, the Neptune to the Venus. Um, Jung worked on his, on his um, psychology of the unconscious. Tensions grew between Jung and Freud, mostly due to disagreements, disagreements over the nature of libido and religion. Clarification, in 1912, these tensions came to a peak because Young felt severely slighted after Fred visited a colleague in, in Quintiling without paying him a visit nearby Zurich, an incident referred to as, Young referred to as a Quislingen gesture, Quislingen gesture. Shortly thereafter, Young traveled again to the United States, gave the Fordham lectures, were published as a theory of psychoanalysis. While it, contem while it contains some remarks on Young's dissenting view of the nature of libido, they largely represent a psychoanalytical young and not the theory young became famous for in the following decades. So in 1912, he sat in opposing and he finished the work, but it was not what he wanted to do. It's not what he became known for. He left it behind as Uranus opposed the sun, uh, conjuncted his ascendant and Saturn hit his icy, not that anymore. In November, 1912, young and friend Freud November 1912, that's Uranus on the Ascendant and Saturn on the IC. Um, when uh, met in Munich for a, a meeting among prominent psychologists psycholog colleagues to discuss psychoanalytical journals, a talk about a new psychoanalytical essay on an Amenhotep, Young expressed his views on how it related to actual conflicts in psychoanalytical movement. While Young spoke, Freud suddenly fainted and Young carried him to a couch. So um, 
it's a symbolic thing, but it was a, a, a big thing on Freud. And he passed out around it because I think he really re realized that Freud was in such a totally different place, Uranus on his ascendant. Young and Freud personally met for the last time in 1913 at the fourth International Psycholog Psychoanalytical Conference in Munich. Young gave a talk on psychological types, the introverted and the extroverted in analytical psychology. This constituted the introduction of some of the key concepts which came to distinguish Young's works from Freud's in the next half century. 1913, that was Uranus opposed his son and on his ascendant, so he's establishing his own thing. In the following years, Young experienced considerable isolation and considerable isolation in his professional life, exacerbated through the World War I. His seven sermons to the dead reprinted in his autobiography, Memories and Dreams and Reflections, can also be read in expression, as an expression of the psychological conflicts which beset Young around the age of 40 after the break with Freud. Okay, Young's primary disagreement with Freud stemmed from their differing, are we doing for time? Okay, we're good. Different concepts of the unconscious, citing the knee, citing, okay. Young saw Freud's theory of the unconscious as incomplete and unnecessary negative. According to Young, though not according to Freud, Freud conceived of the unconscious solely as a repository of repressed emotions and desires. Young agreed with Freud's model of the unconscious, but Young called the personal unconscious, but he also proposed the existence of a second, far deeper form of the unconscious aligning underlying the personal one. This was the collective unconscious where archetypes themselves resided, represented in mythology by a lake or other body of waters, in some cases a jug or container. Freud had actually mentioned a collective level of functioning, psychic functioning, but saw it primarily as an appendix to the rest of the psyche. So this mystical thing they had huge battles over. So uh, then Young spoke at the Psychomedical Society in London 1913 and 14, and these were yeah, okay, so that's basically, and he started building up, doing his own lecturing. He's always fairly well known, so he started building up his his um, lectures and his talkings from there. So that was the young yeah, point. Okay, so um, when we're seeing this to his, um, it follows pretty well. I mean, it's Lucy, you're, gonna, you're still going to have Jupiter and Mars aspects happening in and out of here. You're going to have other things, a two-year cycle, we can go in and go more detailed into this. Um, but you really see for each of the big moves, the big shocks and, and disruptions, what was a big shock for Freud in the psychoanalytical society when Young broke away, he was never really away. He was broken hearted by the time he started studying with Freud when he wasn't being listened to. He was just too proud to give up at his fixed nature. I'm still going to study, I'm going to learn this. But he already knew Young wasn't supportive, of, wasn't appreciating what he liked. And his Venus, Mercury, and Cancer wanted to be appreciated. His Moon and Taurus needed to be appreciated and couldn't take someone not appreciating him. So that that disruption was inevitably going to come. It's just it, it came as the catalytic Uranus came in on his ascendant, opposing his son, and Saturn was on an icy. I can't put up with this anymore. And they piled up, and three difficult aspects all at once. Boom! It broke it, and it was really the beginning of a refreshing new area of young being not codependent working on his own and revitalized but on a personal level for his son in the seventh house to have let go of the um of the relationship and things that meant some in his position he he had to die a thousand deaths and go through his traumas and psychosis and and, and a lot of self-analysis through this where he was self-destructing or self-analyzing his ego had somewhat been broken as Uranus opposed to Sun. A new identity, but a broken ego. And then the war came in, and then came, and then he started to rebuild. As Neptune came in over his son in 1915-16, at the end of the war, towards the end of the war, he began to have a vision of where to go forward. This is my take on it with the planets. Now, we've got a bit more time, so I'm going to... I mean, it's not something happening now, so we can't debate on what you should do or shouldn't do. We're seeing a very classical patterns that we're seeing something play out really well i mean we could take you could take any famous person and take a critical time to four years before and four years after and you'll see how it'll clarify rather than the concepts or the gossip what you'll see how that person was going through things at the time 